It says on Google, internet does not lie, they say. The M5 is locked to the Telstra network. Not true. It's not locked. It just only has the settings for Telstra. I hope I can make this video simple and keep it real to our general use, specifically here in Australia. Um, so I, I will back from my trip overseas and I, I got my Nighthawk M6, so excited to see what it's like. But what I just want to do is just run through it. Um, pretty basic, no, it's not going into too much detail and in, in-depth stuff, but um, let's see what we could learn. First one is, what's the um, high level? Um, so basically, you would just look at the box itself and you would see, well, what does it actually say? What does this, this device give us? Um, first of all, of course, it gives us 5G, which is the same as with the Nighthawk M5 and Wi-Fi 6. It says it on the box. That's, that's one of the two key things. And they're, of course, important to remember always, it's 4G and 3G compatible. Now, that is a question that I get a lot. And yes, if it's a 5G device, it works on 4G. In fact, it probably works um, at the same time on 4G and 5G. Um, and it's also backward compatible to places where you only have a 3D connection. That's always the case. So that's not just this device, that's always the case. Um, I did in my initial video when I just said, hey, this is coming, um, I was speculating if it's just a chipset update. Now, of course, it is a chipset update. Maybe there's chip short shortages, which is currently a problem in the world, but this one definitely has slightly new housing. Um, so it is a new device. It has significantly new features from the, from the previous M5. Still has the two TS9 connectors as always, so you can connect an external antenna such as the x 2 or the MIMO 3 um, 12 or 13 or 15 or whatever you may use on your caravan or vehicle. Um, it has gigabit earth and ethernet. Now that to me makes sense because that's what um, the kind of speeds that you could potentially get with the 5G connection, so you want much more than the 100 megabits on classic uh, Ethernet ports from good old days, I would say. Um, and for some reason, my slide moved forward, but anyway, up to 32 Wi-Fi devices, in my opinion, you don't have to connect 32 Wi-Fi devices. In fact, this is probably like so many things, because you can, doesn't mean you need to, and it probably can't cope with that many devices, plus other demands that you may put on the device. So it's just a statement, it can do 32 devices. I'm not going to be critical, but I don't, I wouldn't use this in my, my workshop with uh, more than 10 devices connecting to it, each of them critical services at the time when you are working. So use it as a consumer device. And then USB tethering. Um, now, what that actually means is, you, of course, you have an Ethernet connection you can connect, so you can connect to an Ethernet port, you can connect to Wi-Fi, or you can connect it through a USB cable to a device, such as my laptop, that does not have, or you don't, just, just want to connect it through Wi-Fi. At that point, it becomes a modem for the, mode, for the device. That's quite handy, so you can just plug it in. It's just like with your phone these days, when you do a hotspot, you can connect in your, in my case, my USB lightning cable and, and my internet connection is just coming up through the phone but you didn't make a conscious connection other than the USB connection. So what I'm going to do first is probably just unbox it quickly and show you what's in the box and everything and then I'll power it up using a SIM card for my phone. So what I've done, I've taken this SIM card out of my phone, you'll see on the screen there it says no SIM card installed. It's an Optus phone and an Optus device. Because the answer I'm going to try or try and answer you is it's not just locked to Telstra, which is something that's different to what you could see online. Um, so I'm just going to power it up because it takes a while to actually boot through and then I'll just go through the slides on what, what I saw yesterday when I really opened it for the first time and went through those steps. So in the box, um, on the live video, this is all you see. Um, no surprise, there's the initial quick start guide um, that you will need. The device itself closed, but the um, enclosure is different. One obvious one that makes it different from the M5 is the power button is now at the top. So the power button is no longer here in front at the bottom. That's basically the only immediate obvious difference. So it's, it's a minor, minor change in feature. Um, fair enough. And the battery. Now that's all there is. That's all you can actually um, you need. And there is power on the battery when I got it out of the box. So you could probably put it in and start using it immediately. Underneath you'll find the other bits and pieces, so there would be more of a safety regulator leaflet, the power cable, and the well, power and USB cable. That's all in there, and that's as simple as it is. So let me just 
get my SIM card, so you'll see here, open up the um, uh, back, it's all plastic, um, that just opens up, take my SIM card, which is a nano SIM, I think, I hope the audio at the background doesn't bother you too much, um, put the SIM card in there, take the battery out, <coughs> Plug it in, close it, away you go. Now, there's a say power button at the top, just plug it, it starts, it shows. Now, there we go, it's starting and it's booting up. So, while it's booting up, I'll just show you the screen that I had initially. It starts off by asking you all sorts of first, first use questions. Customize your Wi Fi. Sure, we'll do that. So it asks you for a Wi-Fi setup, and this is all just when you boot up. And now I have the Costco Posi. That's that's my usual Wi-Fi name that I use. Um, asks you to set the SSID and then sets the um, Wi-Fi. Sets the Wi-Fi password. I mean, and then it asks for an admin password as well. Um, so you set an admin password. That means when you use an app or something that you can get access to the device. Um, and then it asks more questions about power save, you know, battery power and automatic software installation. That's my pet peeve for the consumer products. They, um, they often expect you to know that you're going to get firmware upgrades as you go. And that to me is a pet peeve because, I mean, seriously, <laughs> you buy this thing with the intention of it working. You don't buy it with the intention of you know, working with them through the improvements. But that's consumerism. Um, and then it just has a summary to say default default or default uh, Wi-Fi setting and Ethernet settings and uh, then you will set. Okay, that's it. And my device is also on. So you can see the device is on, it's connected and it's all good to go. It does say yes Optus 4G. Now I don't have a 5G SIM card on my phone. Uh, it's, it's a 4G connection so I don't have 5G today. I'll, when I'm back in the office um, post-COVID isolation I'll take one of the um, Telstra SIM cards we have and I'll take a awesome Expo 2 and go to Hallett Cove where the signal is weak and we'll play a little bit with this device as well to see if we can get 5G connections and get it better. Today it's just the, the basic powering up and use. Now I'm lazy or maybe I'm clever, I don't know which way you want to see it, but I like to use the mobile app. So there is this mobile app that you can get on your phone, it's the Netgear mobile. So personally I would uh, go to the App Store or Google Play, download the app and then you connect your phone or your device to the Wi-Fi network on this device through the app. Well, not through the app, you just connect it. That's basically your Wi-Fi setup you connect to this device. Then you open up the mobile app, the Netgear Mobile, and you have full visibility of all the settings, same menus, but it's just we're so used to the screen and this and working with this. It's just so much easier with this that we just use this to actually manage and, and run with it rather than trying to navigate your way through the menu here. It's the same menu. It comes to the same thing. So if you say, no, I can't get it or I don't have a phone, that's fine. You can get the same menu pro, pro route here. Um, so what you have to do, the, the Optus settings, Vodafone settings won't be default on the device. You just have to go to find the correct APN settings. In my case, the, it's Yes Internet. Create a new APN access point name, um, set the value, just put in your SIM card like I did, and away you go, you've got a connection to Optus. So yes, it, you can use it on other networks, it's not locked to Telstra, it's not locked to at t in the US, it's not locked to any of those, it's an open device. Um, you can see there I have the screen with what the um, app actually shows you, and there's the question, so I just posted the query, oh, this is basically on, on, on Google, and it says there, M5, this is still the M5, the question, but it's, it's the same question and answer to the M5 and the M6 and the M6 Pro, so it's exactly the same. It says on Google, internet does not lie, they say. The M5 is locked to the Telstra network. Not true, it's not locked. It just only has the settings for Telstra. Spend two minutes on Google, find the APN, put it in, and you're good. It's not locked. Uh, and then you, go, you just go to settings on the app, it's just the same on the device. Go to network settings, look at APN, uh, create a new one, which I did in this case, I call it Optus 4G. Um, go in there, edit it, 
Yeah, so edit means that you basically collect the, um, the pencil and there AP and ES Internet, which is something I find on Google. And you can find it on Optus website, you can find it on Whirlpool, there's many places. And the same for overseas. So if you're in the UK, if you're in the US or South Africa, or wherever, it just works. Now, a key thing that, that's bugging me and I just want to talk about, um, what's the difference between, like in this case, M6 and M6 Pro? And also I throw in the M5. M5 is no longer available and I think chipset issues is part of why that is. But M5 had Qualcomm X55. M6 has Qualcomm X62 and M6 Pro has Qualcomm X65 chipsets. Of course, there's newer generations, there are improvements, but can you as an end user really experience it, specifically if you're camping and rural and here in Australia? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, based on that, I wouldn't move from an M5 to an M6. If you have an M5, I would stay with an M5. It's perfectly, it's a great unit. Um, then further to that, what's the real difference between the M6 and the M6 Pro? Now, there are differences. How useful they are for you as a user, that's something you need to sort out. If you can only get the whole of an M6 Pro, use an M6 Pro. If you can only get use of an whole of an M6, I would just go for an M6 because here we go. M6 has 1 gigabits Ethernet. M6 has Wi-Fi 6. It has CAT 19 4G and SUP 6 sub 6 gigahertz, in other words the M3.8 thereabouts gigahertz 5G bands. M6 Pro has 2.5 gigabits Ethernet, so it is faster for sure. Wi-Fi 6E, which is also a theoretical maximum of 9.6 gigabits per second. Now Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, those Wi-Fi 6 is currently the mainstream cool factor one, so definitely, and that's it's much faster than currently, but if you look at the theoretical max you see on Wikipedia, they say 9.6 gigabits per second. However, if you see other database places, and even on the um, blurb for this device, sometimes they say 3.6 gigabits per second, uh, and when you look at test results on some of those tech radar websites and so forth, they measure 1.2 gigabits per second, and then they are ecstatic, and I would be like that as well. So be very careful looking at the absolute maximums that you can get. Um, the maximum is only very theoretical and it doesn't necessarily guarantee or does not guarantee the performance. Um, a big thing with Wi-Fi 6, it uses 2.4 and 5.8 frequencies consecutively. So that's an awesome new bandwidth and it, it actually comes much more if you look deeper into this. So we're going to spend more time learning about it as well as the latency, it's the um, capacity, it's the ability to serve more devices at the same time. Wi-Fi 6E goes further, basically serving the 6 gigahertz frequency band. So the upper band is much, much wider. So it goes up to 7 I think 7.1 gig actually, so there's much more capacity available, so more devices, all devices can potentially have these maximum speeds, lower latency. Um, so th there's, there's a lot coming in, it's not just the actual speed limit. Um, uh, and then of course now, it's just, just running through the last, last few things, Cat 20 4G on the Max uh, M6 Pro and millimeter wave 5G. I need to be honest here that some of those features on the M6 Pro is not useful for us in Australia. So we don't really have millimeter wave 5G anywhere. So we're not going to get to use it. Um, we'll see which one of these devices supports the upcoming 5G bands in the 850, 900 megahertz frequency because that's really what's going to be significant for us as Australian users. Go so in rural places, more remote places, they will introduce 5G. They being Optus and Telstra in 2024, they said, or by 2024, hopefully they do. Um, then we'll have 5G in places that are hard to reach for radio waves, and that will be awesome. Um, now, saying 1 gigabits Ethernet or 2.5 gigabits Ethernet basically means you have one Ethernet port on the device. Your internet is really lightning fast coming in. You at least want your connection further, your cable connection, to be able to support that kind of throughput that you get from your 5G connection. Same problem happens at the back end. You want your backbone to be able to support that connection into the device as well. So it's basically supporting the pipe. Um, 5G, I think if people get 1 gigabits 5G download speeds, they are absolutely stoked because that, that's, that's really awesome. Um, but the reality is, I hear at home as well where I live, I get 400 megabits on a, on a very good day, which I'm really, I get it a lot, but I'm very happy with that. So 400 is still half, half of what the 1 gigabit can give you, so 2.5, it goes well with the millimeter wave. But if you don't have millimeter wave, 
connection and you don't have any millimeter wave anytime soon, it's not useful to go for the more expensive one because by the time you get millimeter wave at your place where you live, it's going to be years and years from now. Um, and probably this device is going to be old to replace. So from my perspective, M6 is phenomenal and I can't go for the M5. It's no longer available. So M6 is the logical choice. Um, but M6 Pro, unless it gets given to you as, as the only alternative, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother, but it's me. I mean, again, it's just personal. Um, and, and does the external port actually support 5G? Does it support 5G millimeter wave? I don't think that would be a good idea because the TS9 actually only goes up to very low frequencies, 3 gig, I think at most. Now I'm just um, shooting from the hip, I might be wrong. Um, it doesn't really do well at the 5G frequencies anyway. It's not going to do millimeter wave. No, there's no hope. <laughs> so, external if you need an external antenna to get a connection and you need to get a night talk, then millimeter wave is not the front of mind feature that you want. Um, as, as I looked at another video, mobile must-haves. Yes, it is. Uh, no, a resource center. Anyway, they, they did say if you're a convention center, airports, hotels, potentially, in the middle of city, in the low, low um, downtown city, specifically in the U.S., then millimeter wave, yes, realistically, but, but here in Adelaide, where I'm in 20 kilometers away from the CBD and it's still even Adelaide, I wouldn't worry. So that's the Nighthawk M6, the first introduction, so it's a bit longer than I thought it was going to be, but this it's quite exciting, but this excites me for waiting for what comes from our own suppliers. As I said before, Teltonica is working on a 5G solution that's going to have proper external antennas that are 5G ready, then the x 2 and the MIMO 3s and those antennas will really come to bring the 5G solution to shine to light. I'm going to stop it here. Thanks for watching. Um, appreciate any comments that you may have. This is a 5G journey that we're on and we're going to look what lies ahead. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, look forward to the next video and, and give us a thumbs up and, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.